it's, it's obvious that in Europe we've been burnt uh, quite literally by our over-dependency on, on, on Russian uh, gas mainly, but also oil. And, uh, well, uh, you know, once bitten, twice shy. This is never going to happen to us again. And the only way we're, we're in a different position than the United States because we don't have our own fossil fuels. Very limited gas resources, uh, coal's almost gone, uh, almost no oil. So the only way we can increase our sovereignty, as it were, in the energy sector is by increasing uh, the production of renewable energy through mainly uh, wind and solar. Um, and um, because we also have to keep our industry, modernize our industry, bring it into the fourth industrial revolution, for that you will need a lot of energy and that will not just be electricity because you can't electrify everything. So for the difficult to abate sectors, we will need an alternative to fossil fuels and hydrogen is that alternative. Ammonia can also be it. I think, for instance, global shipping is going to shift very quickly to ammonia in the next generation, which is also an enormous opportunity for Namibia, by the way. Um, so I think we sometimes even lack the imagination to understand how fundamentally the world will change when we move away from fossil fuels or when the role of fossil fuels in our global energy mix will be substantially reduced. Because then energy will be uh, accessible everywhere where there is sun and wind in sufficient capacity and will no longer depend on whether you have something uh, uh, underground. Which means that also in geostrategic terms the relationship between nations will fundamentally change. Obviously, Russia being the one example we suffered under, uh, but there are other examples of where you know you, you, you could be at the mercy of countries who control resources well, that cannot happen with renewables because also on the basis of renewables and on the basis of where renewables will be able to produce so much electricity that goes way beyond the necessities of the nations where it is produced, all these nations can be part of this new commodity market which is based on hydrogen uh, and on other uh, synthetic gases. So that will change not just... Um, the way we develop. It will not just reduce our emissions, it will not just be better uh, uh, for uh, our economy, it will not just create new jobs, it will also change our geostrategic and security situation. Uh, with uh, less risks, there will be new risks, but they will be of a lesser uh, level than we have now. And I think this is a good thing for you. on all scores, it's a good thing for humanity. And, and I'm sorry to, to bang on about this, but for Africa, this is essential. Because I know I have many discussions with African leaders who say, don't prevent us from using our fossil fuels. And I tell them, I don't want to prevent you from using your fossil fuels. And especially on natural gas, for some time you will probably need it to industrialize and to keep your industry going. But the only way you're ever going to get all 600 million Africans who today have no access to electricity on an electricity grid is through renewables. You can bring solar panels and wind turbines to the most remote villages in Africa and you will empower the people there in a way that is today almost unimaginable and you will bring especially women into a situation that they don't have to carrying the baby on the back burn uh, uh, wood or charcoal to cook their food which is a huge health hazard and, and creates many, many unhealthy situations today. That will be over. Just imagine how, a, how a, a fundamental change that will be. And it's happening before our eyes if we are bold enough to invest fast enough. Thank you so much.